So if we hopped into a time machine and went backwards exactly eight years to the day, at least as of the filming day, not necessarily the day that you're viewing this, obviously, uh, we would find that the GTX 760 was launching from NVIDIA. Now, this particular variant from EVGA didn't come out for a few more months. And uh, yeah, today we're going to take a look at a four gigabyte version of the GTX 760 and see if it is still worth using for gaming here in 2021, especially because finding anything new, modern, and those are the same meaning, finding anything new and at a good price is virtually impossible. So we're really starting to go backwards in time, eight years in this case, to find a GPU that you actually might be able to afford. So the GTX 760, it launched all the way back in June of 2013 at an original price for the two gigabyte versions of these cards of $250. Now I wasn't able to pin down exactly what the MSRP was for this exact variant of the uh, EVGA four gigabyte model of the 760. However, from what I could find from the internet archive and looking at an old Newegg page, it was probably coming out for about $50 more around that $300 price though if you were somebody that purchased one of these things one of these four gigabyte versions back when they first launched let us know in the comments uh, what you remember paying for them because I am curious but I couldn't quite pin down like I said the exact MSRP of the four gigabyte variants and there were several different variants out there so just because one may have been a little bit more expensive like there was a for the win version of this card just because it was a little bit more expensive doesn't mean you couldn't find them at a little bit more close to that $250 MSRP for the two gigabyte versions. Today's card, I actually got a pretty good deal on eBay from, and this is surprising to me because eBay does not have a whole lot of these four gigabyte 760s. I got mine for right around $100, and I was looking at the eBay listings today, and I'll link the, the search that I was using down below, but I was looking at those listings, and these 760s with the four gigabytes of VRAM are not going for around $100. If anything, you're going to pay closer to $175 or $200 right now, and there just aren't very many of them on there. Now, if you're looking for a two gigabyte version of this card, you may be able to find them for around that $100. Though, as always, when we're talking about the used market, check your local markets because you may not find the exact card we're talking about, but that's probably where you're going to find some at least reasonable deals is on the local markets and less so on eBay because that's where everyone will go when they stumble across a random video talking about an old graphics card they will first check eBay. So definitely check your local markets because that's where you're gonna find those deals. And just like usual with some of these older GPUs, today we're taking a look at this thing, but we're looking at 1080p gaming performance. We have a variety of titles. We have a couple esports titles. We have uh, some single player titles that are a little bit more demanding. So we're gonna go ahead and hop into the 1080p gaming benchmarks, keeping in mind that the general test bench that we use for uh, going back and looking at these retro games right now is a Ryzen 56 600X, that's just stock clocks we're letting the motherboard handle all of that the 5600x is completely op for an old graphics card like this we do have 32 gigabytes of ddr4 memory and that is in a dual channel configuration and the games are run on a sata based ssd so let's hop over into those games and see just what the performance looks like so as we get started here with fortnite the low graphics preset at 1080p the average frame rate here is 128 the one percent low is right there at 100 and the 0.1 percent low was 62 and anecdotally speaking this was a very nice experience here in fortnite uh, as long as you have a cpu that doesn't bottleneck the system any more than the GPU will. This GPU is absolutely capable of running this title, not just at good frame rates, but at high enough frame rates that you can be truly competitive playing this game. Our other esports title is Overwatch. This is on the high graphics preset at 1080p. Again, we see very good numbers here. The average frame rate was 99, 1% low there at 71, and the 0.1% low there at 62. And as we would expect with Overwatch, there aren't really a lot of skips and stutters going around as we see the 1% and 0.1% lows still above 60 FPS. So this is once again a really good card for running some of these esports titles and giving you just enough frames to be competitive without 
really having to fight your hardware to just play the game and enjoy the games. Now, if you are somebody that is ultra competitive or just incredibly good at these games, then you would probably obviously want a better GPU that can give you even more frames, especially if you're running, you know, a 144 or 165 hertz uh, panel. But if you're just running on a standard sort of commodity class display, then this GPU is actually pretty good for these esports titles. Moving on to a little bit more of a demanding title than most esports titles, but still an older one, is GTA 5, where we saw some nice frame rates out of this graphics card. The 764 gigabyte was giving us an average of 80 FPS, and that's at 1080p on high settings, a 1% low there of 62, and a 0.1% low of 58. And what I really like here is the consistency of the frame rates that we're seeing. So this GPU, at least the 4 gigabyte version of the 760, can absolutely handle GTA 5. Moving on up the stack to a more modern single player game, we have Hitman 3 at 1080p on low settings. We had an average frame rate of 41, and this is on the Dubai level, a 1% low here of 32 and a 0.1% low of 30. So this is absolutely a playable experience, though if you are looking to stay a little bit more comfortably above that 30 FPS number, you do have room to drop the resolution just a little bit, maybe run this game at 900p to give yourself just a little bit more breathing room between the average and the 30 fps or if you're just trying to prevent those 1% and 0.1% low dips from going below 30 fps then that might be a good option but if you're perfectly happy playing a game like this which is not an overly fast paced game to begin with at about that 40 fps number on average then this card is good enough for that but that's not to say that the 760 4 gigabyte card is without flaw and that is just fully exposed with cyberpunk 2077 which is among the most difficult games Games to run out right now the average frame rate and this is a 720p on the low graphics preset the average was 31 the 1% low there at 24 and the 0.1% low at 22 and while in a lot of cases this was right on the border of being playable I wouldn't want to play this game on low graphics at 30 FPS best case scenario with dips into the lower 20s I wouldn't call this for me a playable experience if you're actually trying to play through the entire game. I would look for a slightly better GPU for this particular title. So there are limitations to the 760, especially when you get into these very demanding single player games here in 2021. However, by and large, most of the other titles are still playable on this hardware. So that launches us right into the conclusion for the GTX 760, at least the four gigabyte version of this card. And for the most part, yeah, you can play most titles on the 760. Now, if you're looking at a GTX 760 and you're sort of split between a 2 gig and a 4 gig card, I would definitely try to get a 4 gig card because it's going to unlock some uh, graphical options in certain titles that the 2 gig uh, card is just not going to allow you to unlock, especially those titles out there that actually lock you out of any options that put you over your VRAM buffer. So the 4 gigabyte card is still definitely more relevant than the two gig card here in 2021 um, and it does still play titles whether you're talking about esports titles or most single player titles it does give you a very playable experience now obviously if you're looking into a 760 here in 2021 to buy you're probably not looking at it as a long-term solution so if you can find a good deal on one of these in that 100 to 125 dollar range then it may be a card to jump at as a stopgap solution because keep in mind you will be able to move this card and sell it back now you will take a loss on it if the uh, the mining craze ends and if GPUs actually get back in stock, at least the newer GPUs and are in stock at or near MSRP, you will absolutely lose money on a stopgap solution. But if you're only investing 125 ish dollars to begin with, then you don't really have these giant margins where you're going to lose out on a ton of money like you might if you're buying something like a GTX 1070 or a 1080 Ti. So if you're looking for that stopgap solution and you mostly stick to multiplayer games like esports titles, Fortnite, uh, Call of Duty, Warzone, um, Overwatch, those types of titles, this should absolutely be on your radar as a card that might be able to get you through the GPU shortage. If you're mostly targeting the newest and greatest, most demanding games out there, then the 760 probably isn't for you. So let's kick it back to you guys. Those of you that do have a GTX 760, regardless of two gigs or four gigs, I am curious how you feel about your 760 here in 2021. Are you still happy with it? Do you want to move on? Obviously, if you do want to move on, then you might be sort of out of luck, at least for the moment. But 
but let me know how your 760s are holding up for you in those comments down below. Otherwise, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos for my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.